Hey, True Believers England Teen here with another weekly top 10 comics sold to readers. This is what people are buying. Like Comicron, great list, but that's what the stores are ordering. This is what are leaving the stores. This is what people want to pick up. And after we do this top 10, we're going to go on over to Comixology and check out who wins the digital week, Marvel, DC, or Independence. We know it's not the Independence. It's never the Independence. It's always either Marvel or DC. Now, these are the shops that are taking part. Remember this from Bleeding Cool, so grain of salt. Don't forget, if you're in these areas, by all means, stop by, pick something up, maybe just say hi, and also don't forget to support your local comic book shop. So without further ado, let's get this party started. Deathstroke Arkham number 37 starts off the countdown at number 10. At number 9, we have X-Men Red number 10. At number 8, we have Spider-Geddon number 3. Number 7 brings us The Walking Dead. Yes, it's still going. Number 7 goes to The Immortal Hulk, number 8. At number 5, we have Infinity Wars, number 5. At number 4, we have MK20, Marvel Knights, number 1. Number 3 brings us Justice League, number 11. At number 2 is Batman, number 58. And at number 1, Green Lantern, number one or the green lantern number one pretty close week marvel pulls the win with five books over dc's four walking dead stepping in for the independent comics but it is a win for marvel as far as the hard copies are concerned so let's see what the comic book shops have to say about all of this Batman is on top at the FFF this week, taking the top spot of our weekly top 10, The Green Lantern, from Grant Morrison, managed to sell one less copy, making it the highest-selling GL book we've had since Jeff Johns was on the book. After reading the first issue, I don't see those numbers sticking, though. Even our resident Grant Morrison fan was a little lukewarm on it. Walking Dead was number four, which is higher than it's been lately. Deathstroke's B cover managed to help it outside sp outsell Spider Geddon and take the five spot by one copy. The strangest thing about this week was Stranger Things number two, which came out two weeks ago. The book's first week was lackluster, especially considering the fact that number one was such a hit. But we managed to sell more number twos this week than last week, thanks to a Facebook post showing off the issue's covers and just casual fans who don't really adhere to the month-to-month -month schedule. Immortal Hulk continues to be the most popular Hulk book in probably a decade. I kind of agree with that assessment of Green Lantern. It was alright. It was okay. Walking Dead's doing better than it has been, and not just sales-wise, um, so I can agree with that as well. Stranger Things is okay as well, I guess. Yeah, not a bad batch of books they mentioned. Color me shocked that Batman wasn't the number one spot this week like it has been for every week it has come out this year just about. We did run a promotion, however, on Green Lantern number one that incentivized the book to the top spot. Honestly, Batman, Green Lantern, and Walking Dead were all really close to each other in sales. The Umbrella Academy doesn't normally hit the top ten, but we are at NC Comic Con this weekend and selling a good amount of copies at the show since Gerard Way is the guest of honor. Everything else played out about the same as usual, including nearly selling out once again of what has to be one of the dumbest named titles of all time, Spider-Geddon. But are you getting it? Or getting it? I, I ruined their joke. See, I was saying, I've been saying ever since I've been doing this, it's, it's the law. Batman has to be at number one. Green Lantern broke the law this week with pretty much a mediocre book, which is kind of surprising. But then again, people are getting tired of Tom King ever since Batman number 50. That was the worst thing he could possibly have done. And now they are kind of paying the price. I'm wondering if this is going to be a trend, though. Grant Morrison's new Green Lantern number one was, of course, our bestseller, but The Wicked and The Divine, The Funnies one-shot wasn't too far behind. An already super popular series that's now promising to make you laugh. I think a lot of folks probably had a hard time saying no to that this week. And on the other hand, some of us say no to it every week. What's that? A Green Lantern book is our number one seller for the week? How is that even possible? Oh, it's a Green Lantern book by Grant Morrison and Liam Sharp. Well, then, of course, it's our bestseller. My point is that it's a very good comic. 
Anyways, the rest of our list is pretty by the books, with strong sales from titles like Batman, Justice League, and Immortal Hulk, Marvel in event books, Infinity Wars, and Spider-Geddon both showed up for the week, and even the final issue of Death of the Inhumans appears in the latter half of the list. While not the sales juggernaut of yore, The Walking Dead shambles into the list near the bottom, providing some rare representation outside of the big two. Well, there's a lot to disagree with here. Like I said, I, I, I thought it was okay. I thought the Grant Morrison Green, An- Green Arrow, Green Lantern was good. Uh, I mean, it was okay, I guess. You know, but I don't know. Walking Dead has been getting better, but I can understand why people are kind of down on it because it hasn't exactly been the most exciting of runs recently. Eh, we'll see. We'll see. For DC, for Marvel, to Image, but nothing generating an incredible level of buzz. While Grant Morrison's Green Lantern number one was our number one seller this week, it generated lower sales and less excitement than we had hoped, with a number of former DC fanatics passing entirely because they weren't sure it would be any better than the lackluster Green Lantern books of the past year or so. This is the most insidious aspect of the diminished expectations when something really good comes along. Some are too cautious to give it a try because they've been let down before. Publishers desperately need strategically planned tentpole books to build the excitement every week of the year, including Fifth Wednesdays. We could just be coming to a moment where names don't sell books anymore. Concepts, maybe, but names, not so much. Just saying. Yeah. Also, if you do have a bad run or if a bad start, not a lot of people are willing to jump on. I don't know. I don't know why uh, somebody would think the Green Lantern sales are lackluster, but a lot of people actually disagree with these guys, and you know they've got they've got it at the top of the list. Anyway, uh, that's what all the comic shops have to say. Going to go on over to Comicsology and see who wins the digital week. At number ten, we have Spider Geddon, number three. Number 9 brings us Star Wars number 56. Number 8 is X-Men Red number 10. Number 7, The Wicked and the Divine Funnies number 1. Number 6 goes to The Immortal Hulk number 8. Number 5 belongs to Infinity Wars number 5. Justice League takes the number 4 spot. In a shocking turn, Batman has dropped to number 3. Number 2 goes to The Green Lantern number 1. And at number one, The Walking Dead, 185. And with an extra independent comic book in the top ten, DC loses again, but this time it's three to five, which, as I said before, does not bode well for DC at all because Marvel owns the back end. I'm expecting a slaughter at this point. At number 11, we have Nightwing, so now it's Marvel 5, DC 4. At number 12, MK20, number 1. It's now 6 to 4 in Marvel's favor. At number 13, X23, it's now 7 to 4 in Marvel's favor. Maybe people forgot DC Comics had books on the shelf, because at number 14, we have Runaways. It's now 8 to 4 in Marvel's favor. Oh, nope, here's one. Okay. 8 to 5 Marvel's favor because of Adventures of Super Sons number 4. At number 16, we have Doctor Strange. Now it's 9 to 5 in Marvel's favor. At number 17 comes The Dreaming number 3. So now it's 9 to 6 in Marvel's favor. And at number 18, Marvel closes the deal. Champions number 26 makes it 10. There's no way DC's going to win, even though at number 19 they have as Guardians of the Galaxy. Holy crap, it's 11 to 6. What about number 20? Who does it go to? It goes to Marvel again with an excellent book you should all be reading, The Death of Inhumans, number 5. What an ass-kicking Marvel just gave DC. Holy Toledo, 12 to 6, two independent comic books. Oh my goodness. Now, I've been noticing, and I've said this again, Marvel's becoming more and more popular. People are getting excited about Marvel again. What is DC doing wrong? I guess they're just bringing in the wrong people. Why? I, what gets me is, okay, Grant Morrison's Green Lantern did well, but some are reporting it did, wasn't as exciting. Uh, people weren't meeting up with that excitement. There are some great books in both companies. But uh, this is kind of telling. I'm very surprised that people shifted to Marvel so quickly. Anyway, 
that's the countdown, and basically those are my thoughts. I would love to see DC do better, you know, of course. I, I would like to see both of them do better, really. That would be awesome. Uh, you know, the market is what it is these days, but I'm, I've am i got a kind of a feeling we just have to accept that's what the market is. But when it comes to books they're buying, these are the books that people are buying. Once again, what shows more DC? But what about you? What do you think should be in the countdown that isn't or what do you think that is in the countdown that shouldn't let me know in the comments below also if you like this video you want to see more click like click share that always gets word out about the channel that's a good thing don't forget to hit subscribe and notification if you haven't done that already and also if you don't mind helping out the channel go on over to patreon drop a dollar in the till help us keep making videos for you I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that and to everyone all of the true believers thank you very very much for watching.